All right, so um, uh, as you've probably seen, my workshop's pretty dense, might be the way to put it. And I've recently discovered that I've got a lot of spools, you know, filaments that I've started. And, you know, you put one down somewhere and then you go, oh, crap, I forgot. I opened another one and I opened another one. And then I've got like three or four spools of open spools with the same filament gone. And then I mix up my different types of filaments and needless to say I got a lot of filaments laying around and I wanted a, a system and you can see on the wall here this is where I'm going with um, I've designed what I wanted was a really low uh, weight system that's modular expandable collapsible um, and this is what I came up with I've put a rail I'm gonna do a little install so I'll show you how it works but I've built a series of rails that go on the wall the idea with the rail is to a make installation easy and flexible, but b minimize the number of holes you need to put in the wall. So you basically need to suspend the rail, and then you don't need to put a set of holes for every one of these things. And so you build one of these for every spool, and this just slides in from the top down. And then once it's in, it's got a little detent at the top, but it should just stay there if you ever want to collapse them against the wall like this. Otherwise, you extend it like that, and then you can drop in a spool. Now, for me, it was super important that it could take, obviously, a wide range of spools, but I also wanted to take spools that were bagged. Um, trying to, you know, you get a, a spool that you're using all the time, I don't bag it. But if, I'm, if I've got a filament that is, uh, especially if it's a premium filament, and I'm just using it from time to time, I'm bagging it and vacuuming out the air. Don't know if I really need to or not, but it helps me to keep things organized. And then this slides onto the rail and there's a little bit of a detent action every five millimeters. So you can kind of position it along the rail, but if you have enough of them, you just fill the rail. And so that's what I've got on the wall here. So you can see that just came off the wall and slides on. <laughs> and this is all my prototype stuff here. I'm gonna build for the first time now the final design, which is gonna use rails top and bottom. So those will stay super stabilized and allow me to come down the wall and create a much bigger storage system. And also part of my idea was the design, A, super lightweight. Uh, so I use as little filament as possible. So A, you can, cause you gotta make a lot of these. You can print a lot of them and uh, B, so that I could see the filament. I didn't want to tuck the filament away into a case or anything. I want to see it so that I don't forget about it. And I can just quickly grab the one that I want. So yeah, that's a pretty long-winded intro, but that's uh, where I'm at and I'm about to uh, build it and see how it all goes. So each of uh, the spool holders consists of uh, the four pieces. There's the two pieces that make up the, the wall side mount and they press together. Hopefully you can show this. It kind of indexed on the top and bottom. And then there's a knob that's got a bit of a detent on it. So once you push these together, it's quite hard to do with just your bare hands. Uh, quite a firm fit. But if you put it on a table surface like this and just press down, if you're straight, which I wasn't currently, then it goes on. In the rare chance that it doesn't slide on, you can just hit it with a, a hammer and then they'll snap in. So it depends on which, like I'm, I printed these across quite a few printers. So once that's built, it's pretty solid. And I did put, again, screw holes in here too. So if you wanted, you could just mount one of these or two of these to the wall. You don't need the rail system, which runs through there. But definitely my intention was the, the rail system. And then for the insert piece, also is two pieces, a little bit more you have to pay attention to. It goes on like this, a little bit offset, and then you put on like this, and then you rotate it up and it snaps on. So I'm gonna undo that and show you why it's doing that. There's a tiny little nub at one end here it's the end that has the notch on the back. There's a little, um, like a tooth. And corresponding to that is a little cutout on there. And it's what's, it's creating like a, like a hook effect. So when you go on like that, it's 
it can move around it. But as soon as you go to this extreme, you'll hear a little click. And if it doesn't, just push down on there and you'll latch it in. They do sometimes pop off if you're playing around with them. But once they're installed, it's not going to pop off because the install the walls of this hold that together. So when you're ready and you're going together, you slide that in and that's where it rests. And if you want to extend it, you just rotate it down and out like that, uh, back up. So that wall is now inside this wall, so it can't it can't come off. So uh, or I should never say never, but it shouldn't come off. And so the whole thing's pretty light. It's, it's not I wouldn't say flimsy, but it's not far past flimsy. But that was intentional because I don't want I didn't want to waste a ton of filament on these. So yeah, there you go. And um, I'll just finish up the wall and then show that to you. It's gonna look good, I think. All right, so. Um, I took down the prototype system and unfortunately I had already put lots of holes in my wall. But the idea with this new one is you won't put very many holes in your wall. The reason for that is I made this little locking plate, which we'll see how well it works. Um, but the idea is you're going to screw one of those at the end of wherever you want to start your rail. And it's a good uh, time to say, remember you got to leave room to get so I've got a rack here, uh, you put just off camera, I think. Yeah, right there. Uh, so I can't, I, I need to leave the width of one of these things, which I think is 85 millimeters from there to get it on and then slide it over. Uh, I wouldn't have to leave room there if I slid from this end, but on this side, I also have a restriction. So I'm gonna leave a gap on both ends and then I can get them off and on either end, which you don't really need because you're not gonna take that off and on so much or ever. Uh, so to size it up, you can take two rails and just hold them up here and see where you want to put the first one in terms of distance wise. So I'm going to go right there. And you don't have to worry about leveling yet because this is going to rotate. So you just put this, this little, I'm going to go right about there. It's super important that you put in uh, really low profile screw heads uh, like not super low profile but like a regular flat head or I think that's called a pan head actually not a flat head that's because I didn't I wanted to keep this as low profile as possible and so you need to keep a low screw head to get it past here so mine should be about there yeah right about there so once that's in place all you do now is slide one on and adjust your your tilt. Probably want to use a spirit level, but uh, I'm just gonna eye mine. And then put another one, and you'll carry on doing it. What I wanted to point out is I did put in the, the sort of a keyhole style screw slots here. So you don't need to use these end locks. You could just screw this right onto the wall, but you'd end up using more screws. And like I said, I wanted to put as few holes in my wall as possible. Okay, so if you were going to just do a single row, you can kind of stop there and slide your uh, your holders on. But my intention is that this system gets used to build a bigger array of them. So now there's a second row goes down below there that will allow the next row to hang off of. In theory, you could just chain these down and hang off them, but it's going to put a lot of load here. So I'm going to screw at each level mine into the wall. You could do that or not do it, depending on how you're building this out. And I've also made, a, this is a three wide rail. I've also made a four wide, a two wide, and a one wide. So if your wall is not this space, you can make it fit however many you want width wise and just extend them. If you have a nice big wall, you do a beautiful uh, display of all your filaments here. Now, uh, another really important thing is that when you put in this second row, it's super important that it's spaced exactly uh, 220 millimeters below that one because you don't want this to start to bind. You want these to be able to slide. And so I made, but have not tested yet, let's take all this out. Uh, a little tool for doing that. So 
there's an arrow here. I made two versions, but I'm probably gonna go with this one. Um, they're basically the same. I was just trying to see which one could use the least filament. Uh, up arrow, so this is up, and you put two, of the, put two of them on, and then hook the bottom of this onto there, and with uh, some uh, vertical downward pressure, this should be perfectly spaced between here and here so that you can just keep repeating this and go down the wall as many times as you need to. So again, hopefully we're still on camera. Yeah, this can go over here. But now I'm gonna need wall anchor, I think. Uh, actually, I might get enough bite. I'm gonna use these uh, types of wall anchors. I've found them quite successful into drywall. Uh, but we're using completely vertical pressure here and it's pretty static, so if I can just go without those for now, I'm gonna do that in case this doesn't work and I have to undo it. But for a proper final installation, definitely wanna use those. Yeah, if I don't over torque those, I think that'll work for, for now. And then this should slide off like that. And that should give us the perfect space and when we go to put in uh, this, it should slide on nicely as long as I come in parallel. Yep. Yeah, so you just keep going. I'm gonna build it out, I'm gonna build it down and then I'll, uh, I'll put some video of the final product. But you get the idea, you just keep uh, putting on these tabs, slide them on, lock them down and uh, you're good to go. Let's see how it comes out. All right, uh, a few minor hiccups. Probably the one you'll notice there is I put two of them in upside down and um, that obviously they don't work upside down. So there's a, there's a notch, probably easier to see up here, a notch at the top that doesn't exist on the bottom. So if you're paying attention, you'll, you won't do what I did. Uh, I wasn't paying attention obviously. Overall, I think it's good. I'm gonna keep printing, build more. I'm gonna go down one more level and like I say, in a couple other spots around. Um, looks like, you know, you have to be careful getting them in and out because they can bump up against each other, but that's a function of getting them in packed so tight. But uh, otherwise I'm real happy with it and we'll see how it performs over time. I've got easily enough open spools to fill that thing right up. Uh, but it's a nice to have a little space too. So when you pull them out of a machine, you got somewhere to put them. So I'm not sure how I'm gonna balance that out. But I guess once I get it fully built and have as much storage as possible, as long as I keep maybe the top row, I might keep open so I can just drop in whenever I have, you know, a spool in my hand somewhere to put it and that'll be good. Anyways, yeah, if you try it, let me know uh, how it works for you and if you have any issues and also, if you want it to mount to something other than a wall, uh, let me know, maybe we can come up with a way. I was thinking about like, I have all this racking that I use. Um, I could almost have it hanging somewhere off there, but I'm pretty tight and I've got three more printers coming. So I'm trying to make space for them and uh, yeah, it's good. Anyways, let me know. Yeah, and I'm also wondering if I should make a little sign system so you can put on the end here um, like a quick, you know, PLA, TPU, PETG, whatever, like little labeling systems. Let me know what you think about that idea. 
All right, here as a supplement, here's it actually finished. Worked out really well. Uh, super happy with it. Might evolve, but uh, regardless, it's good. And I finally got storage and I freed up a ton of space and I'm kind of feel organized and that's always a good thing. So yeah, there you have it.